The following is an address to the nation by Prime Minister Dr. the Right Honorable Keith Mitchell. Sisters and brothers, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to report that the Grenadian rebirth is truly on its way. The overall review about our collective economic performance is strong, and the preview of what is to come is highly encouraging. The delivery that we promise steadily continues and will be expanded. We are far from perfect, and we are also far from finished. The message for today is that we have to stay the course. We have to keep moving in the direction in which we started. This was made absolutely clear with the final review of the International Monetary Fund as we have successfully concluded the homegrown structural adjustment program. I must once again express profound gratitude to the social partners, the churches, the trade unions, non-governmental organizations, civil society, and business community who have joined us in the selfless service of developing our nation. I'm also thankful to the Monitoring Committee of the Homegrown Program, an independent group of men and women who ensured the highest accountability during the program. I also commend all the men and women across the trial and state who answered the call for sacrifice for the betterment of this beautiful nation. The 2013 decision to engage the IMF support for the implementation of the Homegrown Structural Adjustment Program was done against the backdrop of low or no growth, with the previous government even selling assets to pay salaries, a large and mounting debt burden, associated cash flow challenges, and an urgent need to bring stability to the fiscal account. By fulfilling our end of the bargain in the program, Grenada has received significant financial support and more is expected. Now that we have successfully completed the program, in addition to the US 20 million in IMF financing, the successful program implementation benefited from US 60 million so far in concessional loan financing provided equally by the World Bank and the Caribbean Development Bank, CDB. As a result of the Structural Adjustment Program, government has been able to pay salaries on time, to pay salary and wage increases and back pay, and to expand the social safety net programs. The economy has returned to a positive growth path, expanding at an annual average of 5% over the last four years. Although unemployment is still high, labor force participation has increased, which means that more people now have confidence in finding a job and have thus returned to the ranks of active job seekers. Public unemployment levels continue to fall, albeit slowly. Tax revenues have been performing strongly in response to increased economic activity and improved compliance. The primary balance has improved from a deficit of 4.3 percent of GDP in 2013 to a surplus of 5.3 percent in 2016, representing a 9 percent turnaround, which according to the IMF is among the strongest fiscal consolidation efforts recorded in any adjustment program. Public debt is now down from 108 to 83 percent of GDP and expected to reach 72 percent by the end of 2017. That has provided government with the space to allocate money for the improvement of health care services, education, agriculture, infrastructural works, and other programs that better the lives of our citizens. 
There has been a major boost in both local and foreign investment in the last three years. Much of it propelled by our citizenship by investment program, which the IMF in its last report described as the gold standard in the region for transparency. Already this year, we have seen several new expanded projects, such as the Kawana Bay Resort, the expansion of the Livera project. The Breakwater project in St. Patrick's is also moving into its second phase and has already transformed the north of our country. There are several major bridge and road construction projects in St. John's and St. Patrick's and St. David's also, with agro processing operation is already seeing huge returns on the source of tea products. These new projects have added hundreds of jobs so far this year. The end of the structural adjustment program, my brothers and sisters, does not mean that we will return to the old days of waste and irresponsibility, or else we would have squandered the sacrifices that you have made in the last three years. We must maintain the discipline, for it is only through discipline that this hope will endure, and the foundation for the future that we have built will be solidified. Fellow Grenadians, I take this opportunity to inform you of the status of our move towards petroleum development in the state of our country. The Global Petroleum Group, GPG, was authorized by the government of Grenada to conduct a seismic survey to get deeper knowledge and a clearer understanding of the precise location, extent and shape of the prospective geological features within specific blocks of Grenada's maritime boundaries. GPG has now gathered all available seismic data from surveys conducted in Grenada since the late 1960s and integrated it into one comprehensive geological model using the latest technology. GPG has carried out detailed study of the most prospective geological features offering greatest exploration and economic development potential. They have prepared all the engineering and logistical plans for the exploratory drilling campaign, engaged all contractors also, subcontractors, vendors that are necessary, and are on the verge of commencing exploratory drilling campaign within the next month or two. It is instructive to note that all the petroleum-related work previously undertaken by GPG have been executed and or implemented entirely at their own expense and risk. Their achievements to date represents the furthest any company conducting ex petroleum exploration in Grenada has ever reached, and the quest continues with future prospects in sight. It was because of our eyes being focused, therefore, on the future and our responsibility to the next generation that this government also took the bold yet obvious and decisive steps to liberalize the energy sector. We are always manful that as a government, our first responsibility is to all the people of Grenada, Caraco, and Pt. Martinique. The policy for electricity reform was rooted in the belief that an open sector will lead to cost-effective energy solutions that will boost productivity, encourage investments, and guarantee long-term sustainability and growth. This very policy is founded in the pro-investment attitude of this government, an administration that has worked over time to ensure new investments in an economic environment where investors, both foreign and local, can ensure a fair return on their investments. We shall never be unfair to any investor. But we do not believe that the idea of profits has to be in conflict with fairness, decency, and respect for all of our people. It is unfortunate that the attitude of GPP, WRB, 
enterprises has been hostile to the very idea of, of a sovereign government of Grenada seeking to liberalize the electricity sector to provide a fair opportunity for all. We know that the directors of the company have taken advantage of such liberalization in other markets. Grenada's policy is not radical, not inconsistent with regional best investment practices. In Dominica, where WRB is also the dominant partner in the electricity company there, the liberalization of the sector has not hurt their viability. In Jamaica also, where WRB entered a recently liberalized market, they have shown that they can survive and thrive by investing in alternative sources of energy. As the government of Grenada, our wholehearted desire is to continue to have WRB here as a partner in our development. We respect the role they have played in other open markets. We hope that this very attitude could be transferable to Grenada because the people in Labrie, Grenada have the same dreams and aspirations as those in Labrie, Dominica. The people in Harmony, Hall, St. David's want to access cheaper rates of power as the people of Harmony Hall in Jamaica have begun to do. While we think the position of some at WRB has been misguided, we can explain it away as a business interest committed to the small group of shareholders wanting to maximize all its profits. But what we cannot understand and cannot explain is the attitude of a small band of fellow Grenadians who has been so short-sighted in their dreams to attain power that they are rooting against the 100,000 shareholders of this country, which include them. I hasten to remind them that this land will not only be for the inheritance of our children, but theirs too. In this vein, we are still waiting on WRB to sit down with us to discuss a way forward that will guarantee the ultimate viability of Grenlec, as well as a better livelihood for all Grenadians. No glitzy advertising campaign can negate the Grenadian reality of high electricity rates. Many ordinary people see this in their bill statements every month. Too many small businesses have gone under because of it. Our hotels have struggled to stay afloat as a result of it. There has been also a false narrative that has been preferred by some that government wants to get its hands on Grenlick, and for that matter, the troubled hotel Rex Grenadian. Our job is to manage this economy with foresight, innovation, and boldness. We leave the job of managing such enterprises to investors, both foreign and local, who understand the Grenadian values of fairness, service, and quality. Rex Grenadian, like WRB, must first and foremost keep in mind the interests of the people in the market in which they operate. In the case of Rex Grenadian, it is a poor representation of the Grenadian brand and its service continues to be complained about by locals and visitors alike. As a responsible government, therefore, and as a nation which counts the tourism industry as one of its largest, we ought not to sit by idly and rely on false promises of hotel upgrades and service improvements. We'll therefore be tireless in our efforts to see a better hotel product, regardless of who manages it. Sisters and brothers, there is a clear correlation between our economic policies that have laid a good foundation for sustainable growth going forward. The need to liberalize the energy sector and the need to bolster the services in tourism sectors. A country that has no sound economic construct can never be able to take better care of its people. On our move to set up a national health insurance scheme, on our determination to restore the pensions of public servants, 
will never become a reality unless there is sustainable economic construct. That is why everything that we do as a government is intertwined in this overall development agenda. And while we have delivered a lot, we still have these two big items to deliver, pension restoration and national health insurance. And we still have more people to lift out of poverty. These are causes to which we are absolutely committed. These are causes for which we will fight. These are causes for which we are not prepared to let any small group hold us hostage. This government, time and time again, has demonstrated its working class credentials and sensibilities. And we shall continue to build this country on these broad principles. And as we build a stronger nation at home, we continue to take our rightful place in the international community. We are now seen as a progressive nation, capable of managing our affairs, marching forward and inching upwards, sometimes proudly punching above our own weight. Grenada was elected to chair the Board of Governors of the Caribbean Development Bank at the bank's recently concluded 47th meeting, which was held in the Turks and Caicos Islands from May 23rd to 25th, 2017. As the Governor for Grenada, I will serve as the Chairman of the Board of Governors until the 48th meeting of the CDB to be held in Grenada in May 2018. Among the highlights at the recent Board of Governors meeting was the launch of the CDB Borrowing Member Countries Regional Risk Framework for which Grenada was used as a pilot country. The bank signed several agreements, including a new financing agreement with the European Development Bank for US $110 million in new support for climate change mitigation adaptation, and resilience projects across the Caribbean, from which Grenada stands to benefit significantly. The CDB was also elected by the government of UK for the administration of 300 million pounds Caribbean UK Infrastructure Partnership Fund, which is a grant provided through the Department for International Development, DFIN, for investment in critical economic infrastructure in the Caribbean to set foundations for growth and prosperity, reducing poverty and increasing resilience to climate change. Grenada will benefit from over US 30 million, that's 81 million in grants from this facility. These funds will be used for the Grenada Water Supply Expansion and Sewage Disposal Improvement Project and the Western Corridor Road Rehabilitation Project. Next week, I leave Grenada to participate in the UN Oceans Conference in New York, a conference to which I'm again proud to state. Grenada was invited to be one of the 14 nations in the world to co-chair. This is because of our leadership among small states on issues such as climate change, blue growth initiatives, and our economic governance successes. This July also, Grenada is also returning as chairman of the CARICOM region. We are therefore hosting the heads of government conference here in St. George's from July 4th to the 6th. CARICOM continues to be an important mechanism for regional coordination and economic advancement. There are many aspects of the regional grouping that could work better. But even with its shortcomings, it has served us well. We need to deepen our economic integration and break down some lingering barriers to open trade. Given the increasing challenges of security and the threat of international terrorism, this will have to be one of our focal points moving forward. The bombings in Manchester, England last week once again reminded all of us about the dangers of our times, which demand a smooth approach by nations big and small working together. 
The issue of climate change and its effects on small island states, such as Grenada, must also be a debate we continue to push, even though there is an attempt by some bigger nations to go back on the promises they have made to the world community. The issue of peace and stability would always continue to be a goal for all of us in this region. The challenges now faced by our neighbor Venezuela must concern us all, especially since there is a strong historic bond between our peoples. The countries of this region are well placed to be honest brokers or mediators in that situation. We are determined to extend the hand of friendship to help the peoples of our dear neighbor within the context of constitutionality, law and order and respect for human rights. And so, we'll use our upcoming chairmanship of CARICOM for more aggressive advocacy on these important regional matters. The West Indian endeavor is not dead. In fact, it is more relevant now than ever. The unity we promote at home must be extended abroad. So too must the love and respect we show to each other daily. And even while Grenada continues to evolve, so too must our institutions and the people therein. It is an open secret that we are approaching an election period here at home. This season must not be just about who will win the next election, but what sort of future we are determined to shape. For a nation to remain viable, it must find creative ways to regenerate its spirit, to refresh its leadership and to inspire the youth sooner than later to take up their rightful places. This is why I've already indicated that this upcoming election campaign will likely be the last one in which I participate. The process of transitioning to new leadership has therefore begun. It is in this context that our Deputy Prime Minister and long-serving MP for Karaku, Brother Elvin Nimrod, has indicated that he will retire from frontline politics at the end of this current term. But Brother Nimrod has not just been Karaku's most effective MP and one of the most valuable contributors of respective cabinets that I have led. But most importantly, he has been a loyal and genuine friend to me in particular. He has already indicated his plans to the party's constituency council in Karaku and P.T. Martinique. And within the next two weeks, we'll be in a position to name a caretaker for that constituency. Several persons offer themselves for service. We are pleased and excited with the potential caretakers. Each of those is more than capable of taking the battle being handed to them by Honorable Elvin Nimrod. The campaign in Karakou will, like the national campaign, be about pursuing a vision for the future. But we must also make time for it to be a celebration of Brother Nimrod's legacy. In 33 years, Karakou and Piti Matnik have had four MPs. None have served longer, none have served better than Brother Elvin Nimrod. This good and faithful servant of the people of Karakou and Piti Matnik can retire with his head held very high. We'll organize a fitting tribute at the right time for him. Another key member of our current team bowing out of frontline politics at the end of our term is MP Roland Bola, the amicable lion from St. Andrew's Northeast. Like a world champion, MP Bola is bowing out undefeated. Since he came into frontline politics, I have always been impressed by his commitment to being a genuine team player and his no drama approach to service. At this stage of his life, MP Bola says he wants a new and different challenge. As the General Secretary of the New National Party, he wants to help the party establish a durable and sustainable foundation. 
at his request, therefore, we have acceded to that he will be the national campaign manager for the upcoming general elections and a full-time party organizer going forward. The work in the constituency will be undertaken by a caretaker that will also be in a position to name this month. All this must make it clear to everyone that a new national party is at a dual moment of the certainty of continuity and the excited prospect of change. We are attracting more youth and more women than any other time in the history of our party. They are eager to make their own mark and establish new paths within the context of our history of achievement and leadership. And so I have never been more hopeful about our collective ability to conquer new horizons. We dreamt yesterday, we are delivering today, and a new hope fuels our passion for the future. It is not so much that there is a destination we seek, but a journey to enjoy, an excursion that shall lift up our beautiful nation. Each one of us is called upon to take our place, to walk in power and to live a life of favor. This nation is great, and God we serve is even greater. There are, therefore, no limits to what we can do. So let's keep moving on. And I thank you. The proceeding was an address to the nation by Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell.